just imagine you're an American GI and you've arrived here in Britain in this small old village in Wiltshire, Oldbourne. You may have never left your state in America and suddenly you're in a completely new environment and you're training for one of the biggest invasions in military history. Shortly after their country's entrance into the Second World War, hundreds of thousands of US servicemen found themselves stationed in the UK, preparing to assist with the war effort in Europe. Among those based in the village of Aldbourne, Wiltshire, were members of the 101st US Airborne Division, and in particular, Easy Company of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment. Famous, of course, for being the subject of Stephen Ambrose's book Band of Brothers and the subsequent hit miniseries. And they were here from 1943 up until the 5th of June 1944. And they would have trained here, they would have drank at this pub here, the Blue Boar, they would have socialised here, they would have mingled with the local population. But you can just imagine what it must have been like for them. A village they described as looking like a Hollywood film set, Easy Company spent just under nine months in the idyllic West Country village, and they certainly left their traces behind. In this series, we're going to explore these traces. You really can't get more American than an M1 Garand clip. Following a team of archaeologists hoping to unearth the remains left behind by the real Band of Brothers. This is, you know, gold dust. You're not going to get these things. Gold. It's the rare as, rare as hen's teeth, this. Well, you know, I'm just the guy to show you around England. I'm sure I know all about it. Why shouldn't I? I've been here three weeks. Well, the first thing I think we ought to take a look at is an English pub. Yeah, let's get away from these docks, because I know a little country pub is just the sort of a place you fellas will be seeing. Come on, come on. In 1943, the British and American War Office presented this training film to American servicemen arriving in the UK in their thousands prior to the Normandy landings. Starring the well-known American actor Burgess Meredith, A Welcome to Britain served as a light-hearted guide to British society and informed US soldiers how to act and behave during their stay. As the dig continued on the outskirts of Oldbourne, I wanted to find out more about how American GIs adapted to life in Britain. And so I was given a lift to the village in a similar fashion to that which US servicemen would have experienced back in 1943. And in my possession, a very useful companion. Before arriving in Britain, every single American GI was given one of these guides. It was called Instructions for American Servicemen in Britain in 1942. Now this was their guide to understanding how to interact, how to fit in in Britain, how to socialise with the local population. And boy, is it full of some interesting nuggets. An example of one of the key warnings in the book issued to American soldiers, as well as in the instructional film, was to avoid boasting and flaunting their relative affluence especially if they had been invited over for supper. GIs were also reminded that those in the UK had put up with hardship for years for the sake of the war effort. These are proud people and they don't like to tell you the things they're short of, like tablecloths, which are nearly impossible to replace, and their food, which is so severely rationed. The British population had endured rationing on items such as eggs, meat, milk, jam, tea and sugar for over three years before American servicemen had arrived on their shores, and so it was imperative they learn proper etiquette at the dining table. So here's a little lesson for you on how not to behave when invited out to supper in a British home. Don't grab a handful of tomatoes. They're rare luxuries. 
Go easy with the meat. They each only get 25 cents worth a week. You can eat it all in one gulp, but don't. But food and table manners made up only a small section of the guide given to GIs. It was equally important that they learn how best to socialise with the local population, understanding appropriate topics of conversation and subjects to avoid. One of my favourite segments uh, in this manual is subtitled No Time to Fight Old Wars. It reads, if you come from an Irish-American family, you may think of the English as persecutors of the Irish, or you may think of them as enemy redcoats who fought against us in the American Revolution and the War of 1812. But there is no time today to fight old wars again or bring up old grievances. Now was the time to unite. As it says here, we don't worry about which side our grandfathers fought on in the Civil War, because it doesn't mean anything now. There's a real sense of unity here. And what better place to experience that sense of unity than a good old English pub, an institution considered so important to British life that it had its very own dedicated section in the handbook. I'm sat outside the Blue Boar, one of the uh, famous pubs that Easy Company would have socialised in, and this is where they would have met their English counterparts. Right now, Lieutenant, nice and easy, we still got a shot. Oh. Oh. And that's where guides like this were so valuable and important. There's a section here on page 14 which says, In getting along, the first important thing to remember is that the British are like the Americans in many ways, but not always. You'll quickly discover differences that seem confusing and even wrong. Like driving on the left-hand side of the road, and having money based on an impossible accounting system, and drinking warm beer. But once you get used to things like that, you'll realise that they belong to England just as baseball and jazz and Coca-Cola belong to us. Cheers to that. Having explored the village and the Blue Boar pub, it was time to return to the dig site on day five, where progress was being made on the area Richard Osgood believed would contain the foundations of a Nissan hut shelter. Kieran, how are you? Good mate, what's up? Right, this has completely changed from when we were here uh, on Wednesday. Yeah. You've dug up a lot of earth, seems like a lot of, uh, a lot of hard work, but what have you found so far? Oh, we've found a, a couple of uh, some cartridges uh, we found some, uh, some of the, the glass that probably would have been part of the, the huts here. Managed to find uh, all the, the post pads along here with the um, tar paper. And so we've just basically sort of lined them all up, sort of digging them all the way back to there to get them all nice and neat. Um, so yeah, a couple of little good finds along the way. Uh, and then you've got these white markers over there. Mm. So these uh, represent areas where they found yeah, they, signals on the metal detector? Yeah, hits on the metal detector. So they've just, uh, there's a fair few over there. So You have uh, a family link to this area as well? Yes, so uh, my grandma lived in Auburn um, in, a, in, it's called the Clearview House, just near the cathedral there, uh, because my granddad was in the RAF, and he, so he was serving on an okay. airfield nearby. Yep. Um, I didn't actually know this until I got here and told my mum that I was in Auburn, and she said, she mentioned that, yeah, she lived here. So the, the locals have done a bit of digging up yeah. about it. And uh, so, yeah, it's, there's a, that link there, which is just crazy, because I had no idea before I came here. That's amazing, a massive coincidence. And he might, may have been in the, in the field where they were practicing their Could have been, yeah. Today. It's crazy. It def definitely gives you um, shivers that, to think, to think yeah. that they could have just been walking in the same areas uh, that I'm, I'm in right now. So, yeah, it's, it's a great link, and it's just a, an extra part of this dig that makes it more special. A lovely personal connection to the site and a number of promising finds. But as I was soon to find out, courtesy of archaeologist Dan Miles, traces of the 101st Airborne Division and perhaps Easy Company could also be found in the forests around Oldbourne. So Dan, why have you taken me roughly a mile or so out of, out of the village of Oldbourne? What do we have here? What does this uh, landscape represent? This is basically their training landscape. Okay. So the soldiers are in their camp in Oldbourne and these as part of their daily routines. They'd come out and do different aspects of training. Yep. One of the aspects is going out on big, long mile, uh, long hikes. Other aspects is say in orienteering, 
uh, maybe camping out at night, uh, bivouacking, yeah. and that's what they sort of use in the whole area. This was their whole training area, the whole landscape here. So they might have to, I mean, that, that'll come into use, won't it? Orienteering, knowing how to sort of camp and use the landscape exactly. when they're in Normandy. Exactly, it's preparation. No! You want to kill him! Harry right! Harry left! And you have the physical evidence. Tell me a bit about that. We do, yeah. Um, you know, unlike the camps where there are actual physical structures and the buildings, the evidence we have here is very ephemeral. Okay. Other evidence we're finding is in the beech trees around here, like some of these trees here, uh, where the actual soldiers sign their names. Oh, really? And so and that's uh, the other bit of evidence, yeah. Can we have a look at some of those yeah, engravings? Yeah. We'll go up uh, over to the trees there and have a look. Brilliant. Okay. So this is a, an example of one of the tree carvings. Oh, wow. Here. You can see it here. So you've got a... Got yep. a C dot L. Yep. And then no dot here, S, S, C, and then USA underneath it. So some of the guys have been thinking about it, saying that we, you know, they think it might be Carwood, Lipton, South Carolina, USA. I think it could be Lipton, but... But the problem with all these tree carvings is it's very, very difficult to get a positive ID. You'd like to think it's it was, but it could literally be anyone exactly. with those initials. Yeah, But it's, it's, it's scarily close. Yeah. So Lipton was from South, South Carolina, Carolina, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine if it was? That'd be great. <laughs> well, that's a great start. Brilliant. Let's, uh, let's see some other ones. We'll carry on up the hill. Yep. Excellent. Cool, okay. I can the, see some writing here. Yep. Quite hard to make out, but... It is, it is. This is the problem. I mean, these things are done a long time ago yeah. uh, and the trees grow and the things come out. But this is a, it's in a good example, this tree, of lots of different tree carvings on the tree. Yeah. On the same one. We can't read this, but this is probably US, but you can see this here is army. Yeah. With the Y coming down. I think down. you can pretty much make that out. That's US yeah. dot, dot army with the Y With the Y coming, coming down. down. Not sure what would be up there, no, any ideas? It would be a name. A name, okay. But unfortunately lost. I, you could look, that's an A, that's an N. And then if we come round as well. Yep. Now that, that's a name. That's lovely, yeah. Samarin, uh, J43, June, July 43. And we know that this is definitely American. The names yep. are American. Um, very, we don't find as much British tree carvings. It's yep. different. The Americans are so far away from home. Yeah. They sort of like wanted to sign their names in, and you know, of course, where there's they no were. reason it's, for yeah, no, no it's not amazing. If you're a Wiltshire regiment or something, you, you, there's no need to, but here is there, it's, it's, it's different for the Americans. And you can imagine the GI carving this out Absolutely. with his knife, maybe bored yeah. whilst he's, he's camping, camping overnight. overnight. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then round here, you have another one, another one as well. Yeah, it's a really nice one. This is a, this is a great one. This is Tony G43. Tony Certainly not British, this one. Definitely not British, <laughs> very much, I think so. 43, yeah. wow. Proper, perhaps in the same, same company, yep. almost certainly, Absolutely. probably. Um, pretty sure the same time. Came wow. down and did it the same evening. You know. And have you tried to track any of these names and tried we to have, find out their, we have, their identity? Um, there is a, there's a Tony Garcia uh, in the 506. Uh, it was quite a famous yeah. uh, a guy. But he didn't come until later. And so he was after 43, came later in 44, ah. and it was such a shame. We thought we had uh, that tie and that connection. Someone, yep. The problem is it, it's so difficult trying to actually find individuals. There are some examples you can, but it's tricky. It's amazing, but you still yep. here have that evidence, that physical evidence. Physical evidence, Let's yeah. hope this tree stands. Absolutely. Um, but yep. that's amazing. The only thing we could do, I thought to the, the owner, um, you know, if this was to come down, we could maybe chop it and chop it. Yeah. and keep it as a sort of in the museum or yeah. something. I've seen that thing done. Or other people's make um, uh, moulds. That would be great like to mold, do that. Which would be yeah. really nice. So, so when you see the dates, that just really does yeah. bring history home. Soldiers, sailors and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the Great Crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. Next time on Digging Band of Brothers, a haul of remarkable finds are revealed by Richard. 
and then you see someone doing a little dance by the metal detectors and they shout dog tag. And Dan reveals some amazing news with relatives of an Easy Company veteran across the pond. This is something that, you know, he may have wore around his neck, he may have, you know, he may have thrown away, he may have, he may have handled that. Oh wow, that, that's incredible. Welcome to the History Hit YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you'd like to see more videos where we attempt to try and bring history to life, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Cheers guys, see you soon.